Hi, my name is Joseph Marzilliano. I'm a sculptor, 3D modeler, 3D printer, and model painter. The three characters you see here are part of an ongoing project prototyping a resin model kit. In the last several videos on this channel, I've digitally modeled these characters and how to begin painting reproductions of them. In the very last video, I finished painting the alien character of this scene with a radically different color palette and approach than you are going to see in today's paint along with the human characters. I'm going to paint these original prehistoric humans in a way which uses only earth tones and mostly neutrals to emphasize their humanity. From the very beginning when I sculpted this scene in clay, the first contact Proco TV challenge, the conceptualization of the human characters in this scene served as an emotional anchor for the audience. An alien non-human character needs to bridge the connected divide to the audience through the other characters. Without it, it becomes too sterile of a sci-fi project. With these two humans, there is also a universal balance that I believe to be important between male and female, fear and courage, resistance, and openness. None of those things I think are mutually exclusive or necessarily opposed to one another, but I wanted to be able to, be able to illustrate um, a various sort of cornucopia of things that I feel are very human. On another level, their nakedness is not just physical, but emotional as well. More on that later, but for right now, today, I need to use a gamut of natural colors to bring these two people to life. For a little bit of variation between the members of this tribe or nomads, I decided to have the female character have lighter hair of the desert yellow pigment with bits of brown fur, or sorry, fur brown in the creases. Conversely, the male character has fur brown as his main hair color with desert yellow highlights. These pigments are pretty dark, so I didn't need more than one coat or so to achieve opacity against the gray primer that has plagued me since the beginning of this painting process. You know, if I ever prime sculptures again with gray primer, please embarrass me in the comment section for my naive foolishness. One of the hardest decisions that I have to make when painting these two characters is the color of their clothing. With all the neutral earth tones so far, I want to break it up with either saturated, warm, or cool color. I'm just grabbing a jungle green color for the simple reason that the only warm tone that I can imagine would be realistic would be another shade of brown but that would feel way too boring and it wouldn't really break up the colors of these characters. Not to mention, I have enough respect for my audience to recognize that nobody wants to look at a third shade of brown, which would in essence feel like 20 shades of dirt. This is a much simpler design on both of these characters, so it doesn't lend itself to a good breakdown of pattern, but you can see that breaking up the large swaths of beige flesh with a bit of green can keep your eye on them for just a little while longer. When I began painting these two people, I slowed down the documentation of it to give a short instructional video on the secret techniques that go into proper model painting of base coat layers. Spoiler warning, but they weren't really secrets. Instead, they were reminders to slow down and take your time, more so for me than you. Things like water down your paints, don't eat your paint. <laughs> Make sure you apply the base coat in thin layers so that way you preserve the sculptural detail of the model underneath. These things are really important. Um, if you want to take a look at that whole video, I'll link it right now here up at the top. But the reason for that is because base coats are never more important than they are when working towards a texture of a service that the audience is familiar with. And let me tell you, your audience is acutely and intimately aware of the human face, what is and what isn't working about an artist's representation of it. If you're interested in the technical details that went into this, just make sure that when you're painting skin, that it doesn't have scaly reptile <laughs> surface. Do what you need to do to make sure that skin is smooth and that unless extra texture is supposed to be there like scars or rashes, that they're not there. By the way, the reason why people have that kind of superpower when it comes to facial recognition is that AI can't currently even compete with a human being's ability to recognize what looks right with a face. That's part of how children can spot their parents in a crowd 
and why you'll never forget the face of that relative or a teacher that you haven't seen in decades. It doesn't mean, however, that every artist is born with an ability to get facial portraiture correct. Unfortunately, the bar is quite high from the start, so for me, it's worth investing a lot of time there, and I'm still not a master at it. I can pass off a lot of mediocre work to non-artists, but when faces, and for some reason hands, don't look right, um, an untrained non-artist will pick up on it right away. Um, you know, your friend, your neighbor, your family members, they will tell you when hands are too big or small. I'd like to take a second to quickly compare the vast ocean of differences between these two human characters, who I imagine will share a cave dwelling, and the alien creature itself. The alien ended up with this rich palette of saturated cool blues and teals for its clothing, alongside warm organic textures of red, orange, and yellow in its face. That is a richly colored and exotic character. By comparison, I'm shooting for the humans to remain interesting based on their emotional anchor in reality that I mentioned earlier. You can see I'm already selecting pigments that are neutral and earthy. The acrylic paint brand I'm using is Army Painter, and I've already selected Fur Brown, Barbar Barbarian Flesh, and Desert Yellow. I know, their names, not mine. The only cheap CraftSmart pigment I'm using is a flesh highlight of peach for the noses and cheeks of these characters. As an artist, I always try to emulate Norman Rockwell in regard to the variation of colors involved in flesh tones on human beings. I feel that his face and skin texture painting techniques are stylized and pushed nearly to the limits of what is believable, but they're just absolutely gorgeous. I mean, what artist wouldn't want to aspire to Norman Rockwell, right? The noses and cheeks are often so ruddy that they almost scream to you that the characters are made of flesh and blood. This humanity is something that I always look to, and need to do my best to convey here with the simple humanity of these prehistoric characters. For me, this part of the painting process is trying to convey emotion just as much as sculpting realistically. The most important aspect of each of these characters, regardless of their body language and anatomy, is the clear emotional interaction they are both experiencing. And so painting their faces properly to retain the detail of the emotion that they express is the make or break point of this entire model kit. Now, I can say that at this point because I've already sculpted them, and if you want to download the STL files to 3D print these characters to display them or paint them yourself, you can find them at the link to my Patreon in the description below. But I really like to take the approach of painting the whites of the eyes first in the areas that are open within the eyelids. Then I walk away and let them dry completely, because smudging the whites of the eyes on a person is totally inexcusable when showing my work to anybody after the fact. One of the things that drives me crazy, actually. It really is a point where I like to lay the sculpture down or secure it elsewhere on its own, then hold the paintbrush as steady as possible, and use my other hand to hold my wrist as steady as possible. You'll probably also notice that my face is creeping closer and closer to the sculpture as I prepare to paint the iris color onto the whites of the eyes. I find model painting generally really relaxing, but this part always racks my nerves. I find painting eyes to be essentially painting three colors onto a progressively smaller and tightening area, one within another within another. It's claustrophobic, and it's like trying to hit a dart in a bullseye that you've already hit. Last, I have to put the black dot of the pupil right into the middle of the colored area. On models this small, I will stop there, but when the eyes are bigger, like you saw in the video of the alien in the last video, I'll put a fourth color of reflective glossy white inside the pupil as a reflection of a light source. I really love that illusion. It's a personal goal of mine to do more larger work, to be able to try more of those kinds of techniques without having to use that death grip on my painting wrist with my other hand. There's one last illusion that I have to try to pull off, and that's the flame on the torch in the hand of the prehistoric cavewoman. Conceptually, I think it made sense to have her interact with the alien character 
and symbolically hold a torch to signify either enlightenment or the handing down of civilization, something like chariots of the gods or ancient astronauts. The final version of the sculpture on display is going to have an LED light source for the flame effect coming from a campfire, but this sculpted flame needs to still be passable. I wanted to enhance the sculpture as a nice touch and not kill the effect of everything else. So I'm using a blending technique with a semi-wet brush to blend the red at the base to an orange, and then more blending to blend the orange into the yellow near the tip. One coat passed with each is fine for me. It seems okay to my eye and I'm not going to mess with it further. One feature of these characters that I haven't really discussed yet is the look of sheer terror in the face of the male caveman. It was conceptually really something that I decided on very, very early when I was sculpting these characters is that I was going to have one character be open and maybe a little in awe or taken aback by the situation um, with with a look of astonishment. And I was going to have another character who was going to look like <laughs> a little bit like that. Um, uh, you know, just they are they are seeing something that scares and terrifies them. Um, and you don't know whether they're going to go into fight or flight mode. And I really wanted to do that because I, I do so much work that involves heroism and characters that are strong and Know, superheroes and things of that nature that it really meant a lot to me to be able to sculpt someone in such a weak emotional state and I think that that has something to do with the strength of the piece overall. Next time I'm going to create a sculpture base environment and paint it from scratch for these characters and their otherworldly visitor to be displayed in. With that I'm going to wrap up these characters and roll some turnaround beauty shots of them finished. I hope it did a good job conveying the intended humanity and fragility that we all might experience when facing a supernatural experience. If you enjoyed watching me attempt this and working towards my first original model kit, don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more. Until next time.